is Robbie Coltrane, back here on two with the last of his Dario Fo. Train concludes his one-man production of Dario Fo's religious histories, Mistero Buffo. Gentlemen, that's your culture for tonight. And Oski. <laughs> and on with the show. <laughs> and now we come to the Popes. Oh, there's a wee bit of a pregnant silence after that. <laughs> you all know the songs, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Nowadays, of course, we're used to kind, lovable popes. Pope John, Pope Paul, Pope John Paul, Pope Paul John Paul, John Paul. <laughs> pope John Paul I, he was the one who looked like Peter Sellers. He did. He may have been murdered in the Vatican, we don't know, nobody does. But boy, was this ever the favourite pope fantasy, the Bridgeton Orange Lodge. Pope slain in Vatican. The headline, the Protestant Telegraph had always wanted to run. It was like having two walks in one year. <laughs> Any connection, of course, between what you're about to hear and our own present dear Pope, that lovable old Polish war horse, that tarmac taster, <laughs> is, as they say, purely coincidental. He did, of course, cause a great deal. <laughs> Take your time, missus. <laughs> he did, of course, cause an enormous amount of tension when he came to see us here in Scotland. The, the faithful were all crowded round the tarmac at the airport, and then somebody sighted his airplane. It was a, a DC-10, you know the sort, long and straight with a wee bleep in the end, all tense and yellow and white with a skull cap on it. So much so, yes, so much so that one of the faithful moved by a mixture of fanaticism and short-sightedness, shouted, It's the Pope! He's flying! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, said his more sensible chum. That's not the Pope, that's the Pope's aeroplane. But someone else had taken up the call. It is, it's the Pope! He's flying! Does flying! <laughs> the Pope doesn't have all these wee windies doing his side. But he wasn't having any of it. No sir, e Bob. The Pope is flying to Scotland, it's a miracle, shut it. <laughs> of course, by the time the plane touched down, the crowd were in a frenzy. All oh, the planes touched down and the crowd were in a frenzy. <laughs> My question of the night, of course, undoubtedly, is will the Pope kiss the ground in Scotland, thus recognising that we are an independent country? Or will the kiss you gave in Heathrow have to do the lot of it? <laughs> yes, of course, the, the crowd here in a very tense mood. The rumour is, of course, that the Pope will be lynched if he doesn't kiss the ground. <laughs> Whilst the more health conscious of the faithful are worried that they might catch something if he does kiss the ground. <laughs> Ugliest rumour of the night, undoubtedly, is the one that some of the baggage handlers have been bribed by the Grand Master to spread Laza fever on the tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he landed. Nothing happened. He kissed the ground. Scotland's honour was saved. The snake and the grass had arrived! I think John Paul's all right, as folks go. I'm sure he's a very sincere man. Just a, a few vouchers short of a pop-up toaster when it comes to birth control, perhaps. <laughs> I 
But then, what's new? <laughs> but if he gets it in the neck occasionally, that's absolutely nothing to what happened to his predecessors. Like the man in our story, Pope Boniface VIII. Now, Pope Boniface was not a liked man, not even by his own people. And particularly not by the Franciscan monks who started in the 13th century. You see, they believed that the dignity of the church was founded on the dignity of the poor. Kind of radical stuff. And as we all know, there's nothing that great religious leaders and political leaders hate more than, than some of the faithful taking the message just a wee bit too literally, if you know what I mean. Have them excommunicated. Have them deselected. Have them destroyed by your hired hacks in the medieval muckraker. But Boniface had a rather novel way of dealing with the opposition. He used to sit on them. <laughs> sit on them. <laughs> Boniface's favourite way of dealing with people who disagreed with, his favourite way of silencing them, was called nailing. And he would nail you, usually by your tongue, to the church door. Mm. He didn't get a spot in Wogan for being a naughty boy in those days. <laughs> what you must remember, too, is that <coughs> the Vatican in those days was huge business, the biggest business in the world, the first multinational. And Boniface it was who invented privatization. I'm surprised Margaret Thatcher hasn't had him made a saint, really. <laughs> but of course, in those days, there were no telephones to privatize, and no one could believe that anyone would ever own water. <laughs> Not even in those days would he have thought of that one. So Boniface was obliged, Boniface was obliged to privatize indulgences. Indulgences. Do you know what indulgences are? Well, what is an indulgence? Well, it's not stuffing your face with half a pound of Parisian creams whilst watching Gone with the Wind, madam. No, indulgences were curious little things. They were um, a sort of phenomenon of medieval life, if you like. You see, what happened in medieval days was that when you died, you couldn't go straight to heaven. Even if on the balance of the good and the bad in your life you were going to go to heaven, you couldn't go straight there. You had to stop off in purgatory to have your... S <laughs> <laughs> they do a sit-up now, you know. <laughs> you couldn't go straight to heaven. You had to stop off in purgatory to have your soul cleansed. A wee bit like steeping the wallies overnight to get rid of those unsightly stains. <laughs> In fact, very like that, because you could be there for a day or you could be there for 150 years according to just how stained your soul was. And if, um, if hell was an eternal burning fire, then purgatory was a rather unpleasant singeing. <laughs> and uh, because the end is nigh was stamped on the old medieval brow, the thought of spending 150 years in purgatory became almost as frightening as hell itself. And of course, remember, this meant everybody. Because like it or not, in those days, we were all papes. <laughs> I wouldn't have been a pape. <laughs> it's talking rubbish. I'd have been a Buddhist. Aye, me too. I'd have been a Hindu. <laughs> I'm going to look it up when I get home. I don't think that's true. I was just stirring it. <laughs> we were all papes. So what did you do to avoid getting stuck in purgatory for the old scrub it up? Well, the best thing to do was to buy yourself a papal indulgence. And the Pope would basically write you a sick line. <laughs> <laughs> this boy's been very, very good. He doesn't have to go to purgatory. He's staying at home with a warm liniment, you know. <laughs> and uh, if you were rich, you see, what you did was you basically you built one of these. Or you put a... 400 foot high stained glass window in Chartres Cathedral, or perhaps something a wee bit more discreet, you know, like you'd slip uh, the Pope Leonardo da Vinci. Please, Your Holiness, it's been cluttering up the breakfast room for years. I... <laughs> Is it a solid gold frame? I hadn't noticed. Had you, Marjorie? No, I hadn't either. You know, that's a... <laughs> <I've Albany. laughs> well, what about the rest of us? What about the plebs? Well, there were, there were papal indulgences occasionally available at a sort of cut price for a more reduced rate. And uh, let, me, let me show you exactly what would happen. Into town would waddle the fat friar. Typecast again. <laughs> would stride manfully into town. 
my show, say what you like. <laughs> with his pockets bulging with indulgences. <laughs> Please, madam. <laughs> so he'd be standing there with the indulgences underneath his arm. <laughs> and the village would all gather around in the village green. I knew it was you. <laughs> now, this is serious stuff. This is the story. The, um, the villagers would all gather around to get their indulgences, you see? And there was a lot of tension in the air because it was one thing to confess your sins in private, but quite different, of course, to walk up in front of all your pals and everybody in the village and say that you'd sinned. So usually the first person to come up was the village idiot. <laughs> so there you have it, the astonishingly handsome friar my show, I'll fibber the like, and the village idiot. Yes, my son. <laughs> How much time off purgatory would I get for one turnip? <laughs> well, it depends very much on the nature of your sin, my son. I did gaze upon Mistress Thistlethwaite. I see. Well, that's hardly a sin, old chap. Not to worry. Not to worry. Not to worry. <laughs> I did gaze upon Mistress Thistlethwaite whilst she were disrobed. I see. Well, that's slightly more serious, but not, um, not strictly speaking a sin, I don't think. <laughs> not to worry. I did gaze upon Mistress Thistlethwaite whilst she were disrobed because I was shagging her at the time. <laughs> How many turnips have you got? So the, uh, the monk will get his money and everyone will get their indulgence and the end could be as nice as it bloody well liked. Until Mr. Thistlethwaite got back from the shops, of course. <laughs> so have things changed since the Middle Ages? Well, I don't think so, really. Jim Baker and Tammy, pardon my mascara, Faye, have turned buying salvation into a multi-million dollar empire. And, uh, well, ever since Reagan said, Ours is the generation that will witness Armageddon. You can forget selling crack, manufacturing motor cars, running guns even. The biggest growth industry in the States is saving souls for a fee naturellement. <laughs> and so long as that old Reaganite maxim applied, <laughs> red sky at night, shepherd's delight, <laughs> red sky in the morning, four minute warning. <laughs> So long as that maxim applied, of course, then the, the twice-born baker just kept cleaning up. Born again baker. Must have been nippy for his mum, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> until, until he slipped up and he met an Eve with an apple whom he got to know in a biblical sense. You were going to do something wonderful for the Lord. You have been chosen from amongst women to do something for the Lord. So why don't you just slip off your clothes? And um, remember... By helping the shepherd, you are helping the sheep. And then two minutes later, oh, be fair, Robin, two and a half minutes later. <laughs> oh, Jessica, you sure did minister to me, honey. Oh. Well, uh, I guess I'll have to go and see my bodyguards, honey. I'll, I'll maybe see you around, Jessica, okay? Bye, Jimbo. <sighs> I really did enjoy that, Jimbo. I can't tell you. I'm sure glad that the Lord chose me. 
Matter of fact, I enjoyed it so much, I think I want to share it. You don't suppose God would mind if I shared my little story with Playboy, do you? <laughs> oh! And so it was that Jim Baker's personal Armageddon had begun. It brought a whole new meaning to the expression missionary position. <laughs> so have things changed? I don't think so. I don't think Jim and Tammy would recognize genuine humility and goodness if it fell out the glove compartment of their Rolls Royce. Or indeed would the gentleman in our next story, Pope Boniface VIII, a man who owed more to the mafia than he did to the milk of human kindness. 13th century Pope. On the day of judgment, an eternal king will come. He who has created everything, fleshed in our mortal flesh, he will come from heaven on the day. God, this is heavy. <laughs> no, no, I have to continue. Give me the other one, right? On the day of judgment. Give me the mirror. Mm. Hey, it's crooked. I told you, it's crooked. Give me the gloves. An eternal king will come. Why only one? Why only one glove? Do I have only one hand? I seem to have two. What am I supposed to do? Cut one off. Give me, give me, give me. On the day of judgment. An eternal king. Right, the cloak, the big cloak. <clears throat> okay, are we ready? Oh, no, why am I the only one singing? Do I have to do everything? I have to wear the hat, I have to wear the cloak, I have to sing? What am I, the Pope or an ox? Careful how you answer that. Okay, everybody sing. We go again. On the day, pathetic. I will do it. Let's do this properly. First voice, you. Yes, you. On the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. Voice two. An eternal king. Quiet. An eternal. I said quiet. An eternal. Please. An eternal king will come. He who has created, boom, boom, bam, bam. It's an incidental, it's a B. Attention, bing, bing, boom, boom, bing, bing, boom, bing, bam. Created everything. You are out of tune. Yes, you. You're out of tune. Quiet. Okay, everybody sings. Let's do it nice. On the day of. <gasps> Who's standing on my robe? Who's standing on my cloak? What the hell's the matter with you? Get out of front. Get out of front. Get out. Right. <coughs> Who stood in the cloak? Was it you? Was it you? You, tuneless. It was you, wasn't it? This guy's a very pathetic individual. He can't push, he can't sing, watch it, or... <coughs> Capiche? Right. Now, into the hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hey, I feel good today. Alle where the hell are you going? Where the hell are you going? And where the hell is he going? Well, excuse me. I am the Pope. I am not some horse and cart driver. What is the matter with you people? Somebody else is having a procession at the same time as mine? <laughs> You're kidding. Who? Jesus? Jesus who? Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ! Uh, hey, it's been a long day. I got confused with the names. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Ooh. Look at the state of the guy. Did you go out like that? What a mess. No wonder they call him poor Jesus. Let's get out of here. That kind of thing depresses me. Come on. Oh, no. You what? You think it would be better if I was seen to go over to him? You think it would be better if I was seen... To go over and help him with his cross. 
Oh, right, I got it, I got it, I got it, right. Of course, then people will applaud me. They'll say, hey, that body face is not such a bad guy. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Take the cloak, take the cloak. Take the staff, okay. Watch this, do you know this? You're not gonna believe this. My legs are trembling. Me, my legs. <laughs> okay. <clears> Hi, <throat> right, Jesus, how's tricks? Boniface, don't you recognize me? Boniface. Boniface the Pope. <laughs> What's a Pope? <laughs> Come on, Jesus, you remember you said St. Peter was you, and then it was the shepherd, and then the Pope, and 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 the Pope, remember? <laughs> you didn't say that? You didn't say that. <sighs> Come on, Jesus, don't you recognize me anyway, Boniface? Hey, Come on. Oh, the hat! Oh, what can I tell you? It was raining when I came out. <laughs> get rid of it! It's gold! Get rid of it! Get rid of it! I don't know. He's got very fixed ideas. Take the diamond rings. Take the gold belt. Take the crucifix. Ah. Take the shoes. Take the gold ones. Right. Yeah, and the silver ones. Yeah, the silk ones. Why not? Okay. Is that me? Right. I don't know why. That's the way he likes people to be. What am I, a psychiatrist? Huh. Right. Now give me some dirt, give me some dirt rubbing my face. I should rub it all over my clothes. I don't know. He just likes people to be filthy, right? Right? Okay. It's disgusting. He will love it. Do you recognize me now, Jesus? Your son, I who love you, I who... Ugh. I who kneel before you. I who have never knelt before anyone. I who... Jesus, you're not paying attention here. Come on, let's have a little manners, for goodness sake. You heard what about me? You heard that I tortured monks? That I tortured monks, me? That I've done evil things? Oh, Jesus. These are stories made up by people, malcontents, jealous people. What can I tell you? Who, uh, who was it told you this, Jesus? <laughs> Do you have a name? Because if I get the name, I'm going to kill <laughs> Uh, uh, I've heard bad things about you too, Jesus, but I choose not to believe them. Believe me. I choose not to give me a monk. Give me a monk and quick. Jesus, the monks are like my brothers. I love them almost as much as I love you. What do you mean you can't find one? There's 20,000 in the dungeons. Unchain a few. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I, I, I love them, really. I. Oh, look. There's one now that happens to be passing. Look how clean he looks, how healthy, how happy. Mm. Run along now. <laughs> Jesus, can I help you with your cross? Why? Because I'm an ox. Look at me. I carry a great big cloak and a great big hat. I'm strong as an ox. And forgive me, you don't look too good. Please, allow me. Thank you. Simon, Simon, hey, Cyrenian, Cyrenian, come here. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Hey, Jesus, yo, oh, hey. Jesus, you pushed me. It must be a mistake, right? Of course it was. And again. Some weight, huh? <laughs> right. One, two, three. Ah, oh, God! No, he kicked me. No, no, he kicked me this time. He kicked me. Donkey of all donkeys, you kicked me. Your father's going to hear about this. He's not going to be pleased, let me tell you. <laughs> you want to know something, Jesus? You want to know something, Mr. Rabble? It's going to give me a lot of pleasure to see you nailed up later. I'm going to drink today. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to go dancing, and I'm going to go with horse. And you know why? Because I, at least, am a prince. Look at me, the rings and the cape and the hat and the crow's ear and everything. Look how it glistens, rabble, because I am a prince. I am Boniface. Praise be to Boniface, king of all kings.